Some of you have asked about the expansion of GUE courses over the years, and this is a personal issue for me, so I wanted to take a moment and discuss it. First, I want to start by reminding everyone that GUE has evolved with an exploration-driven model in mind, where diving activity and projects are supported by comprehensive training programs. And the graduates from these programs are empowered to safely conduct dives that appeal to their interests, and often these include conservation-oriented projects. Our yearly exploration report demonstrates our commitment in this regard. Now, understanding this aspect is important to appreciating the evolution in our training, and there are two things I'd like to discuss. The first is our commitment to excellence with strong individual capacity and robust team support. And the second involves the expanding needs of our global communities and their growing projects. Let me explore the structure of our programs that have resulted. So first, we have GUE primers, which are really very much like workshops. So they're optional, and so not necessarily if an individual is skilled in this discipline already. And things like that might include doubles or dry suit. And in this case, when divers have a skill, then they need not continue uh, with training in this program. And if they are weak in that particular skill or need more attention, then they can take a primer in this area and they have a non-evaluation program where they can learn and develop a solid foundation. Then we have GB core classes, and these involve uh, final evaluation, they have a pass, a fail, a provisional ratings, and they're taken in sequence where a diver has to pass one level before moving on to the next. These are broken into three main areas, recreational, cave, and technical. And within each of those, there are three levels. So level one is an introductory or a learning phase. Level two is an experience-based program, and then level three is an expert or exploration level. And we've been holding on the level three in tech and cave, and that's something that's really much more project-based than it is class-based, unlike the recreational level three, which is more class-based. Now finally, separate from the core curriculum, we have some areas that are really too elaborate to include in core classes, and these include specialized skills like rebreather, or side mount, or DPV, and trying to learn how to use a DPV while in the midst of a cave or a tech class, or any class for that matter, would be just too complicated and really lose the plot for the main part of the class in general. And so these need to be really broken out. They're more structured. They require a pass-fail kind of criteria because they're important and the skill needs to be vetted before a diver can proceed in that particular uh, activity. Uh, but they are not well established or they do not fit well into the core program. So if we come back in summary, we want to remind ourselves of the two main drivers that I mentioned, and we want to begin with the end in mind. Now, first, we imagine a new diver with limited experience, and we try to create options that allow them to divide early training up as necessary. And so recreational one, for example, might be broken into two parts, as it is, a supervised diver being a beginning part and, and then a full rec one or it might include a REC2, which could be divided into three components. And so that allows more flexibility in the early programs, and then later as divers have more experience, then they uh, can proceed with less subdivided programs. And we talked also about primers in the beginning, which would allow people to break up training even more, even those are optional. And then the second overriding cons uh, consideration that we have is we would imagine an extremely complex technical project and we want to organize everything we can envision that would su support success in that arena. So for example, working with unique equipment or specialized skills. So in broad summer, we have primers which are optional. We have the core programs that are broken up into our three components with three levels each. And then we finally have programs or classes that don't fit into the core classes but are important like DPV uh, or rebreather curriculum that are separate programs. So I hope that helps explain our rationale and mostly I hope that you can appreciate these aren't designed to create a range of classes for people to take. Uh, they are designed to support people when they need it and to help them move through the curriculum in a smooth and efficient way, developing whatever skills are needed for their own personal diving or in support of their community and our broad range of global projects around the world. I assure we, we remain very committed to excellence, the founding principle with GUE, and we'd love to hear from you and know how these programs are being received in your community. So what do you think? Are there any primers you think we shouldn't have created or that we should get rid of? How about some of our classes? Should we get rid of some of those? or shift those in any way. 
And regardless of your opinion, I can say we're nearing the end. We have well-developed programs now. We have very relatively limited numbers of changes in terms of structure. We'll always continue to improve those programs, but we don't have any substantive changes and no significant additions into our training. So thanks very much for tuning in. Let us know what you think. And it's been great speaking to you today.